to all who are weary and need rest, to all who mourn and need comfort, to all who are lonely and need friendship, to all who are complacent and need disturbing, to all who sin and need a savior, to all who are called and would serve their fellow man, this church opens wide its doors and bids you welcome. Well, good morning and welcome to Rapid Ann Baptist Church in beautiful downtown Wolftown, Virginia. So good to have you with us here this morning. It is Sunday, November the 28th, and it's our first Sunday in the season of Advent. And later this morning, we'll be lighting the candle of hope. And as the old hymn says, all our hope is on Jesus. Now we always start out with birthdays and I know for a fact that tomorrow the 29th Baylor boy, Baylor Daniel has his fourth birthday. Hard to believe that he's four already. He's growing. He loves it when we sing happy birthday too. Now on Tuesday the 30th right next door young Jim, Jim Coates has his birthday and also on Tuesday a little girl by the name of Paisley Tucker better known to me as Sugar Baby yes yeah, she's our oldest granddaughter will be seven years old on Tuesday uh, also later this week and it's a big week at the Daniel house because Emily Daniel our JMU girl will be having a birthday and then later in the week on the 4th, none other than our neighbor Kenny Coates, big week in their household too, has a birthday coming up. Now I know within the sound of our voice that there's more out there, so this is also for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you and many more. Yeah. Happy birthday, y'all. Little Baylor loves it when we go. And many more. And he goes, yeah, with a big old smile. Happiest boy I ever seen. Now, as far as announcements go, all activities will resume this week here at RBC. Everything from Monday night Bible study at 7. That, that group's been meeting for 20-some years. Uh, Tuesday mornings, I think around 9 or so, the ladies will be back with their Bible study. Then Wednesdays, 6 o'clock, right here is our prayer time. And then at 7, we break off. The ladies go downstairs for Bible study. And our men's ministry meets right here in the sanctuary. Uh, also, on Thursday, Restore Madison meets here at 7 o'clock. This is our 12-step Christ-centered addiction recovery uh, program that we share with the community and this is for all of those who are affected by addiction as we know addiction doesn't just affect uh, the user but their families and their friends so many tentacles to addiction so we invite you to come it's for everyone affected by uh, addiction and we offer the answer the answer, just like our hope, is in Jesus Christ. If you know of anyone in need, send them our way Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. That's all I can think of as, a, as far as announcements go. But our story this morning comes from the time when a little girl was walking down the street and there was a police officer there writing a parking ticket. And she comes up beside him and looks him up and down and says, Mister, are you a police officer? He doesn't even look up from his pad and says, Yes, I am. Little girl looks up again and says, Well, my mama says that police officers are here to help us. Is that right? This time he looks around down at her and says, 
That's absolutely right. That's why we're here. And, and you're a police officer. Yes, I am. Hmm, uh, can I see your badge? And he turns all the way around and shows her a badge. And you're here to help us, right? That's what Mama says. Yes, little lady, that's why I'm here. Then, would you please tie my shoe? That's a good one. Now, in the spirit of worship, Rapidan Baptist Church. We'll be looking at the very first chapter, starting with the 18th verse. And Matthew writes, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, but while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save us from his sin. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. May the Lord bless both the reading and the hearing of his holy word.
dad once told the story of his five-year-old young son by the name of Junior. And one Christmas, Junior, all he really wanted was a red, shiny truck. And that's all he could think of. That's all he could talk about. He carried a picture of one in his pocket, just, just in case you weren't sure which one he was, he was talking about. Now they were near the toy store, you know, he just mentioned it, that he was thinking about a red truck. Wrote to Santa asking for it. He made a special trip to the North Pole that was set up down at the mall, you know, to let Santa know exactly what he was looking for. His daddy said, well, he even, he even prayed for it. And sure enough, come that Christmas morning, he couldn't wait to get downstairs to the tree, and he was looking every which way, and then finally it caught his eye. There was his red, shiny truck. And he played with it all morning and right on into the afternoon. Mid-afternoon, Daddy sits down in his easy chair and he's, he's looking at the newspaper. And all of a sudden, he starts hearing some sniffling on the other side of his paint. Puts the paper down and there's his five-year-old junior. He's got his truck in one hand and he's got the wheels in the other. <laughs> and he said, Daddy, through his tears, he said, Daddy, my Christmas is broken already. Hmm. Now this story leads to some interesting questions, which also lead to some other interesting questions. Are there any Christmas gifts that are worth more than you actually pay for. For that matter, worth more than you pray for. Gifts that don't break and actually live up to all of their hype and their warranty. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning that the answer to that is, is yes. And over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about some of those gifts. But the first of these gifts can be be unwrapped by listening to Ben and Angie as they uh, read our Anvit reading this morning and, and lit our candle. And they're reading from Isaiah and then our scripture lesson this morning uh, on the board from Matthew. Because you see the first gift of Advent that I want to share with you is the gift of hope that's associated with the birth of of Jesus the Messiah. Now according to the definition, uh, the word hope can be a noun or a verb. Ms. Sherwood's an English teacher, she can tell you this. And I certainly believe that in a spiritual sense, hope is indeed a verb. It's an action word that means to want something to happen or, or to be the case. And in just the past two weeks, I've heard the term used in earnest. Uh, the other day, I heard a student say that uh, he wished that it would snow three feet. <laughs> wow. Can you imagine how long we'd be down to school if it snowed three feet? A couple years back, I had a local farmer come to me and say, you know, with all the rain, it's been one of the toughest years we've had in a long time. And then he reached in his wallet and handed me some cash and said, even so, I hope this will help y'all feed some people over the holidays. And it did. Last year while ringing the bell, an elderly lady with a cane came to the kettle and said, I don't have much, but young man, I really like that <laughs> But young man, I hope this will be a help to somebody in need. Mm -hmm. And it was. Now, where, whereas the students' ex expectations may be a bit of a stretch, however, we are due for a big one, aren't we? Rodney, what do you think? We, we, yeah, he's shaking his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're due for a big one. You know, who knows? 
But the farmer and the lady's hopes have and will be met. It's doing for a cure. I got to sit down a few minutes with uh, my buddy Bucky Murray. And uh, many of you know Bucky. He is, uh, he's quite a character. And even with all his health issues, you know, that he's faced over the past few years, he'll absolutely have you in stitches in just a matter of minutes. He is, as, as they say, he's good medicine to be around. But he's been carrying a burden for some time. And he said that night, and we talked about this before, he, he said, Jeff, I, I just don't understand. He said, I know folks who have gone to church their whole life. And if you ask them if they're saved, they'll respond, I hope so. I hope so. Then he asked, how come they don't know so? Well, Bucky and anyone else that's interested, that's a mighty good question. And knowing the answer is most certainly an essential in Christian living. And I believe that there are at least four reasons for the uncertainty. And the first reason is folks fully don't understand who Jesus is and why he came. The name Jesus means the Lord saves. You see, names mean something. Remember last week we studied uh, Jabez. You remember what his name meant? His name meant pain. Yes. And when a, come, a name comes to mind, you automatically think of something that, that goes along with it. Uh, for example, Roger Barrett, and you think, Hokies. <laughs> Which reminds me, Moose, there may be a defensive coordinator position <laughs> at UVA. All right, other names mean uh, things come to your mind. How about uh, preachers? What comes to mind? <laughs> Fried chicken. <laughs> Mountaineers. Play hard. Isn't that right, Ed? Baptists. Baptize. But Jesus, Jesus saves. That's what comes to mind. And through the birth of Jesus, God offers the greatest gift with the greatest warranty, with the greatest return policy, because you see he's coming back, that the world has ever known. 100% salvation guarantee. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. But what? Of everlasting life. Number one, you gotta know that Jesus came to save. And number two, folks have to realize that they need a savior. Many folks have been led to believe that if they live good lives, they'll go to heaven. And I don't know how to break it to them other than to share Romans 3.23 with them. That says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And as many times as I told you, I'm, I'm proficient in that Greek word all. Because, guess what it means? All. Everybody, every one of us have sinned. In case anybody thinks they're an exception to Romans 3.23, let me submit... Uh, 1 John 1 8 it says if we claim to be without sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us in other words if anybody believes they're not in need of a savior they're fooling themselves you could say that their wheels have come off and that their Christmas is broken already. Now a third reason for this uncertainty comes from the folks on the exact opposite end of the scale. You see this group falls into two categories. 
One, they believe that their sins are too great or too egregious to ever be forgiven. The second group believes that they can work their way in. To answer the first group, you certainly, you know, they certainly have a firm grip on Romans 3.23. They understand that they're sinners. And yes, we've, we've all sinned. But from now, from here, the gospel does contain, contain some further bad news. See, the good news of the gospel starts out with some bad news. All have sinned. And then Romans 6.23 says that the wages... And what are wages? Ooh, that's what we deserve. Yeah, we work all week, and so we deserve that check at the end of the week. But it's saying here, the wages of sin is death. Man, that's bad news, isn't it? But now here's the good news kicks in. But the gift of God is eternal life. Beloved, here we are in the season of gifts, right? Uh, right? And all wrapped up right in the middle of all of those 98-inch flat screens, <laughs> iPhones, and, and I think I saw one the other day. It was over 100 inches. Whoa. iPhones, Xboxes. But if we'll just wipe all of that to the side, you see, wrapped up right in the middle of Christmas. If we'll just make room, that is. Unwrap and accept Him. The greatest gift ever given. Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is simply telling us if we would just confess our sins that He is faithful and just to forgive us. Jesus Christ throwing our sins into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is let me see, east is from the west they never come together they? no remember no more beloved what we're talking about here is grace and I know from personal experience it can be hard a hard concept to grasp hold of because it concerns a love from God that's much bigger than my little pea brain and heart can conceive. And Paul's letter to the Romans chapter 5 helped me to visualize the big picture with this. I'm going to ask y'all to turn with me if you will to Romans 5 and we'll, it starts with verse 1. All the scriptures eye opening, but this was eye opening especially for me. So that I could get a visual. Romans 5. And Paul writes, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this, what's the word? Grace. Grace in which we stand. And rejoice in hope. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. What? What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> did that say? And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance character. And character hope. And character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us from when we were still without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly now listen to this 
This is profound. Because verse 7 says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But here's verse 8. But God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Wow. Miss Joyce, when the books are reconciled, that means they're balanced, right? They're in perfect balance. You see what he's saying? Our sin debt has been reconciled. It's been paid in full. Whew. You know how they used to, in the old days, you know, stand. <laughs> paid in full. Paul doesn't leave any doubt about it, does he? Now, our second group has been led to believe that it just might be possible to earn their salvation. For some reason in their minds, what Jesus did on Calvary just isn't enough. As a matter of fact, Jehovah's Witnesses are a good example of this. I don't know if you've ever been uh, visited by the Jehovah's Witnesses. But you see, they can carry no blessed assurance. They carry no blessed assurance because they've been led to believe that their salvation is up in the air based on what works they can accomplish on the church's behalf. Now, I had a member of that church that used to visit us every now and then. She was very nice and thoughtful, and we used to share vegetables from our garden with her. And she told me that she was required to make so many visits to stay in good standing. You know, boy, if we could only be as disciplined ourselves as well, huh? But not to earn brownie points, as she was trying to do, but rather to share Jesus with folks. But anyway, she knew she wasn't making much headway with me. So one day she brought a supervisor with her. And this fella had a long overcoat, and he looked exactly like Pee Wee Herman. I mean, identical. Identical. And I was thinking, oh boy, this ought to be good. And I engaged them on their works based belief using Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works lest any man could boast. But he immediately started, Yeah, but you got to do yada, yada, yada. Okay. Then I asked him if he knew what the Bible said was the work of God. And he got a puzzled look on his face. So I went to John 6, 28 and 29. And it says, Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? They're asking Jesus here now. And Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one who he has sent. Now that's a good one, but he never hesitated. He went right in. Yeah, but you still got to do this and you got to do that and yada, yada, yada. It was at this point that I prayed a, a quickie in my head. <laughs> and you know, sometimes if you've been prayed up, you know, a, a quickie will work. Like uh, Al was telling me the other week, he had a problem with the machine and he prayed a quickie. And, and, and the Holy Spirit gave him an answer to that, to that problem. And that was a great witness, by the way. Uh, by, uh, so I prayed, and dear Lord, please, you know, help me to make an impact on these folks because they've been deceived. At the very moment the Holy Spirit 
gave me an idea. Now I know it was his because I'm not this smart. <laughs> I looked straight at him and asked, how much work did the thief on the cross do? Now he didn't say anything, but I could see the wheels turning in her head. You know, and, and then quietly she says, well, he, he didn't do any work, mm -hmm. did he? And then all of a sudden, Pee Wee looked at his watch and said, man, look at the time. We got to be getting out of here. We got to be getting out of here. I told him to come back any time, but I, I, haven't seen him. I haven't seen him since. We can only pray that they've broken the bonds of deception. Now, don't get the wrong impression. We should do things on behalf of the Lord, but not to earn our salvation. Jesus did all the work that was ever needed on Calvary. But we engage in good works because that's just part of the joy of Christian living. To give thanks for what He did for us. As the end of Ephesians 2.10 puts it, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You say, that's pretty profound too, because you see, that what that's saying is that God knew in advance to place you right there at that time. Wow. In the last couple minutes, let's just get down to some brass tacks, shall we? anybody was to ask you this very morning if you were carrying that blessed assurance how would you respond are you a hoping or are you a knowing mm -hmm. let me be frank time's too short mm -hmm. to just be hoping mm -hmm. it's time for knowing because tomorrow is not promised. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 9.25 tells us that it is appointed once for a man to die. And then the judgment. Now I know this is not a rosy feel good Santa Claus is coming to town kind of message. <laughs> and the Bible makes it clear that you can know without a doubt for certain. It's a matter of life and death. Romans 10, 9 is speaking directly to you if that's where you are this morning. And it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Oh, there it is. It's plain, it's simple. So simple, however, that many, many people miss it. Man, there's got to be more to it than that. No. No, it's not. Jesus says in John 6, 37 and 40, red letters now, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life. Man. For you folks that already know, as Miss Crosby so beautifully worded it, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of heaven divine. For you, I know the waiting can be tough. I can't tell you how many times we sit and watch the news and cry out. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Plenty of times here lately. Old preacher once told me that God's waiting so that more can mm -hmm. come into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we should be witnessing and waiting. In his book, Dare to Believe, Dan Bauman illustrates what it's like to know that something is yours even though you have to wait for it. And this is a great illustration. Sarah, you like this. You may even have it in hand, but are not able to enjoy it out of the box. 
He says that when he was young, he always did a lot of snooping at Christmas time. <laughs> Got a feeling he wasn't the only one. Was he? <laughs> did y'all know all the hiding spots? Just going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, trying to find. He was trying to find his gift and figure out what was wrapped in the packages that Mama had, had hid. But one year he discovered a large package with his name on it that he knew was a set of golf clubs. One shake of that box revealed he knew it was the clubs. And when Mama wasn't around, he would go and he would feel the package and he would <laughs> shake it, you know, and pretend that he was on the golf course. I do that sometimes. <laughs> the point is, he says, I was already enjoying the pleasures of a future event, namely the unwrapping. Had my name on it. I knew what it was. You see, it was his, but it had not been not be handed over to him until Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. Then he would see with his eyes what before he had only seen with his heart. Beloved, Christmas means that Christ has given us the gift of heaven. At this point, it is still wrapped for us, isn't it? But guess what? As believers, the package, well, that package has our name on it. Has our name on it, Richard. We know what awaits us. It's ours. We would never have received the gift if it were not for God. Yeah. Nonetheless, we wait longingly, don't we? For the day when we will enjoy the gift of heaven and all its unwrapped glory. But beloved, your Christmas need not be already broken. As unfortunately so many feel. Because all you need to do is to open the door mm -hmm. to Jesus Christ and know, know that on that Christmas morn so long ago that hope came down for you mm -hmm. and hope came down for me. Hope came down for all of us. Through the gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Oh Lord. Mm. Christmas is coming. You brought back me for that special gift. Looking and looking. <coughs> the Lord. Please open eyes this morning that there is a very, very special gift, the most important gift of all, the gift that your Son Jesus Christ brought us, the gift of forgiveness of our sins and eternal life. The good news is you're not hidden. You're not in a closet and you're not in a box. You're ready, willing, and able to save us. You're as close as the mention of your name. And dear Lord, we just pray this morning, if anyone here has not done so, that today would be the day of their salvation, that they would cry out to you, that they would open the door to you. Oh Lord, we thank you again for being in this place. Oh, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children say it. Amen. 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 <coughs> I want to thank you again for joining us here at RBC this morning. Always appreciate it when you take the time to do so. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace. The peace that passes all understanding. 
through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen.